What's going on guys? I'm Chris and this is Regular Guy Training. Yes, it's Monday and yes, Monday sucks. So here we go with another video. So, uh, I've gotten a lot of questions while I was doing the configuration video and the follow-up to that, like on foregrips and stuff. I've gotten a few questions and I've gotten a lot of, few of questions on like slings and stuff, right? Like sling configuration purposes, that whole deal. Uh, I've even gotten questions as to whether or not a sling is uh, needed, right? So, I don't have all the slings on rifles that I currently have, but I do have a few things that I can use as far as just like a configuration video and all that stuff, right? So, first things first, we're going to go over like a two-point sling. Just running specifically a two-point sling and stuff like that, and there's a lot of reasons for why guys prefer that over other stuff. Now, here's the thing. With two-point slings, the first and foremost that is really needed for a two-point sling, in all honesty, is cover. It, comfort, I'm sorry. A lot of you guys saw the, um, the Blue Force sling that's on uh, the RWMD rifle that I currently have, and I've got a couple more of those. Um, just kind of purposed about with different, with different, um, what you call it, with different rifles and stuff like that that I have at the house and all that. And one of the big reasons for that, in all honesty, is comfort. Real long patrols that last a long time. You're gonna, it, in, it, it's gonna start weighing into you. It doesn't matter how light the rifle is after a few hours. You're going to feel as if you need it, right? So, as far as that is concerned, it's one of those deals where, number one, if I'm putting on a two-point uh, two sling, and it's for that purpose, right? Real long distance patrols and stuff like that. It, situations in which you could see yourself wearing that gun for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours with, like, body armor and all that stuff, right? Like Majos, for instance. A two-point sling might be better served for what it is that you're trying to do. Simply because if you have to get there over a long period of time, you might as well not kill yourself uh, as far as wearing a gun is concerned. Now, as far as configuration on a two-point sling, um, what I personally prefer isn't even as you see it right now. You see it in a two-point configuration, but this is a one to two-point convertible. Where I would more than where I would more than likely prefer this is a second attachment point all the way over here. Now, the reason behind arranging it in the two farthest points is simply because the sling handles the rifle better, and you can actually see or feel it in a lot of cases to where if you attach um, the sling back here and up here, you can see that the sling supports the rifle a little bit easier, and it hangs more naturally like so. Now, the reason for this really is just so that the weight is uh, the weight and how the sling bears the load on that weight is spread out and it's easier for the sling to hold up the rifle rather than pinching into one spot and digging into a shoulder. Now, it's a problem that is going to occur anyway, but it reduces how long that happens and it reduces how hard it, your sling digs into your shoulder. Now, another reason why I like the Blue Force uh, sling is because of a little puss pad in it. You guys have seen that pad before, and if I'm trying to do what I'm trying to do with that particular sling, it's easier for me to just deal with carrying a rifle for a real long time, especially if I'm like teaching class or something like that, because the, the gun's on for a long time. So, when we're wearing the sling, you can see it actually as so. Okay, if you're right, if you're if you're left-handed, your support hand your support hand goes through the sling, and you just kind of wear it like so while you're walking around and stuff. If you foresee yourself getting into some kind of, into some kind of issue or you think that you're going to get uh, to a point where you're going to start shooting, a real simple way is to just snake that arm through there and wear it like so, simply so that the gun isn't tight when you start using it. And as you start using it and stuff like that, you have the slack required to do stuff like mess with reloads, work around people, that type of deal. And you, can act, and you can get into, in and out of positions much easier with it, so it really does help. To just kind of wear it like so while you're doing the shooting part, and then when that part's over with, or even way, way beforehand in the hours and hours and hours that, you, that you're not using it, 
because most of your life, if you're thinking about this configuration, you're more than likely a soldier or a Marine. So 99% of your life is living with the rifle, having it on and that type of stuff. And a lot of people will sit there and, and like beat on comfortability as a reason for a dedicated two point sling. But realistically speaking, the more uncomfortable you are, the more wore out your shoulder is, you won't be performing at your peak performance anyway. So having it further degraded because of your pride is not going to help you, right? Now, there are different uh, configuration options that have a very specific purpose. And first and foremost, a lot of do, um, you can see this configuration as a fairly uh, popular one, and I've seen this configuration a lot, for dudes that, are, that still have that same purpose in mind, but if they foresee themselves getting into contact of some sort, they switch to a one-point configuration, right? That's why the MS2 and 3 were so uh, popular, simply because as far as one-point stuff is concerned, as far as switching shoulders and doing all this dynamic stuff, the, the emphasis here is to, get this, is to have the, the gun attached to you but get the gun out of the way as much, or the sling as much as possible so that we can manipulate the rifle a little bit easier. And if we have to, we can switch to secondaries and all that stuff. Because more than likely, an appropriate use for this, in my eyes at least, is dudes that do a lot of direct action type stuff, okay? Like uh, your ranger bat guys or your, or your soft teams that want to do... Um, that end up doing a bunch of direct action and stuff like that, even though that's not their primary mission. But still, if they foresee themselves getting into issues and they and they get themselves um, out of helicopters and whatnot, one of the first things that happens is that they go from the two point to the one point and they start and they start running their their little mission or whatever. Now, what affects way more people in that aspect would be like SWAT team type guys um, who do direct action and building entry and all that stuff and they want the gun attached to them but they want it out of the way as much as possible so i understand the need for uh a one point sling and a lot of and a lot of dudes that are in this type of field will just have a dedicated one point and only use it for that right um where the two point thing comes into really comes in handy in all honesty is that if you have to handle people like drag them move them around that, that type of stuff for sure, you can move and drag someone in one point, and it can be done. People talk about getting hit in the nuts or the legs or whatever, and that being a painful thing, but if you're dragging a teammate, the emphasis is on dragging that teammate. It's not really going to bother you, I promise. It's just a slight inconvenience, and you'll ignore that for your friend that's on the ground and bleeding all over the place. Okay, It's a non-issue. Where going to two-point really does help is if you have to... Um, again, this is for like soldiers and Marines and stuff, is if you have to do manual labor, and that's like most of our lives. So you can go to this um, two-point configuration if you have to pick up small things or move small things, and if, you, and if you have to have your rifle on you while you're doing said stuff like that, you can simply move it like so, and if your command staff is really annoying about it, similar to just wearing it this way, you can snake your gun hand through and throw the muzzle end of your rifle down so nobody's bothering you and you can still do all the stuff you gotta do. Uh, a note to the ambi switch guys, guys that have like Troy and stuff like that as an ambi switch, you'll find it a little annoying um, if you're right-handed or left-handed depending because if you sling this guy onto your back, um, there's only really one of two ways that that rifle can be oriented and that sights up or sights down, right? Either one of those can happen, especially if you're doing like manual labor and that type of stuff. And I have had the, the uh, Ambi uh, mag release from Troy uh, release a magazine while it's pressed into like my hip or my belt or something while I'm bent over picking something up. So be conscious of that. And if you still use the Troy, I recommend keeping your rifle to where your sights are up rather than down so that um, the magazine release button that is fenced off is there, right? Now, obviously, this is going to have to change if you are right-handed simply because the sides are different now. So, for on this side now, 
we're on this side now and we're doing essentially the same thing. Okay, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to snake our gun hand through that. And if, and something that you need to be aware of is that like sling attachments that are the same way, um, or, or dominant for that side, if you go to the other side, it's gonna roll, it's gonna happen. So if you're on the right hand, if you're right-handed and you're slinging up your rifle like so, again, I personally just prefer if you, if you have ambi stuff on your gun to keep your sights up. If you don't, then that's not a worry for you, right? So that's all dependent on a huge list of things that a lot of people um, need to consider, especially like how cool your commander is with you altering your service rifle and that type of stuff. I've been fortunate enough to where commanders didn't really care, and I've, I've fitted non-standard stuff to um, the O3's rifle and stuff like that before, more than once actually, so it, it happens. Um, there are commanders that are cool with it, there are some that are absolutely not, and you have to use military furniture and all that stuff, and as far as a commander is concerned, there are valid reasons for both. Now, here's the thing. We did the two to one convertible, the dedicated two point and the one point stuff, right? Um, there are certain advantages really. And oh, by the way, a good thing to note in all honesty for the two to one convertibles is that while it does dig a little bit more into your, uh, into your shoulder, it doesn't dig quite as much as this next method that I'm going to talk about. Now the next method that I'm going to talk about covers two point also. And usually you see this with like two point convertibles um, but but not all the time to where that sling attachment point is like right in this region right here So it hangs so the sling attachment points are not very far apart and the idea is to dedicate That two point to being worn like so with the sling attachment point For up front being somewhere around here the reason being is so that they can switch shoulders and stuff while staying in two point and then keep it in this configuration so they don't have to detach and reattach stuff. Um, I see this as a as something that is 100% valid if you're running around with like QD buttons and stuff because from what I've observed, the QD buttons on slings are actually harder to detach from rifles, in my opinion anyway, than a regular clamp type system. And you can see that I don't that I don't regularly use the uh, the QD stuff. Um, for pretty much for the vast majority honestly of what I use simply because pressing on a clamp is easier than having to push in on a QD roll your two fingers in there and then pull it out uh, it's just a little bit more intuitive I personally believe to just press a clamp and get it off of there so a lot of guys will use their, two, their uh, QD slings in that real short two point configuration so that they can keep it two point all the time still carry it around like so if they have to do it for a long time or wear it like this when they have to start shooting stuff, and then from there they can go ahead and switch shoulders and stuff. You can see how tight it got with a more forward attachment point, so if it's back here, there's a little more slack and you can switch shoulders in two-point configuration more easily. Uh, there are a lot of guys that dig, that a lot of different people that dig all of this variety as far as sling configurations and stuff. What you really have to decide is what your uh, lot in life is and what exactly you prefer given your individual situation, okay? Because guys watching this video could be SWAT dudes, they could be, you know, regular green suit soldiers or Marines and stuff like that, you know. Um, and for those of you that are in a lot in life that is a tier higher than that where you're doing a lot of um, indirect missions as well as direct action missions, they're gonna make their choices too, obviously, you know. Uh, and for a long time, we see this all the all the time in the gun community where all the stuff that tier one guys do a lot of people tend to emulate and they and they do and they've been doing it for a long time but consequently at classes like regular people like civilians and stuff will be walking around just dying from running a uh, one point configuration all day the entire day and they they look at their sling and they're just like man this thing looked comfortable but it's killing me you might want to reevaluate how you run around with your sling and stuff based on your individual purpose for it, right? Now, there's another opinion um, that I can certainly see a whole lot of merit to, 
and it's something that I personally agree with, and it's for, ah oh, man, I just dropped my Oakleys. And all that stuff has to deal with, um, with home defense, like individual home defense. What is most likely going to uh, be a situation, quote unquote, for people that own rifles like these is that they use them for personal and home protection, right? Now, the opinion is no sling at all. Now, here's the reasoning behind the no sling, right? It's 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. You wake up, you're naked, you roll to your right because you, you hear a whole lot of clanging and banging going on in your house that you know it's not the wife or the kids because the wife's next to you and the kid ha is, wasn't able to move that big, huge thing that just made a big old noise, right? And you see lights and stuff like that going on from flashlights and stuff like that. People think you're not home. Whatever it is, pick the scenario in your head. They roll over, they snatch up, they just snatch up the rifle in a hurry and they head towards the kid's room because that's where your that's where your uh, priority is, right? Wife is just snatching up a, a rifle uh, nearby and she's barricading the room while you are going for your kid and in your haste to snatch up this rifle because you don't because you don't want to waste time by putting on a sling and fishing into it and then going in there, right? Uh, in your haste, you just have the rifle sling hanging like so, and you snatch something, and it and it not only hooks you really hard. It also telegraphs where you're at, and it bodes and it bodes for bad news bears, right? So the idea is to just not have a sling on the home defense rifle, so you can just pick it up, do what you got to do, and if you are well trained enough, and if you know how to uh, take corners and all that stuff, and the second that you pop up on that unsavory character, you can deal with it while providing yourself enough as much space as possible. Now the con to this is a side of your hands, you have zero rifle retention. Right? Like, obviously, if I were to just let this go, it would crash into the ground and all that stuff. I understand the reasoning entirely behind the, the weapons retention side of the house and being able to just grab a rifle that doesn't snag on stuff all, the, all over the place, right? Here's the thing. The reason why I like no slings for home defense rifles is simply because I can snatch the thing up in a hurry. I don't have to worry about stuff being loose and clattering about and making noise while I'm trying to move through this place. And I definitely don't have to worry about, you know, fishing into one and then getting out there, right? <coughs> so, it is a tight, light system that is super maneuverable that I can use and stuff like that without doing more telegraphing. And on top of that, if you do know how to clear a house individually and stuff like that, which means going cold side, for those of you that know what you're talking about as far as um, room clearance and stuff is concerned, it usually includes going cold side and being super cautious and reading door crack and reading door cracks and all that stuff and just taking your time. You can take individual corners pretty easily uh, and not have to worry too terribly much about weapons retention. And, and if you and there's always the thought process of well, what do you, what if you take a corner and just slap into somebody, right? 100% possible. I'm not saying it isn't possible, but it's way less likely if you know your stuff as far as being able to take a corner um, in a methodical way rather than in a hasty way. And that comes with uh, training and all that stuff, right? So, personally, for a home defense rifle, I prefer having no sling at all. Now, if I'm going to take the same rifle and go to a class with it, yeah, I'm going to attach a sling to it because I, I don't want to just have to stand there with a rifle in my hand the entire time wearing myself out for no reason. Yeah, I'm going to put a sling on there and I'm going to sit there and, and chill and I know how to work a rifle with and without a sling. And for a few drills, I would just take the sling off altogether and practice it as the home defense setup, right? Now, there's a whole lot of methodology and stuff that goes into training with that, but that's a totally different discussion. But these are just a few uh, methods in which people mess with their slings and stuff like that. And there's a whole lot of just fight amongst the gun guy community about this. And unlike a lot of stuff, I can actually see the reasons for a lot of these arguments. And I can see why dudes have differing opinions. You know, it's but just like anything on the internet, there are people that are reasonable and are like, oh, this is my lot in life, here are my opinions. Oh, your lot in life is different, I get you, and I understand your opinions, good to go. Agree to disagree part ways. And then there's the other side of the internet that's like, fuck you, you're dumb! You see what I mean? 
So what I would say is that for your individual um, circumstances, right, whatever they may be, whatever your lot in life is, job, purpose for the rifle, all that stuff, really think hard about your reasoning for why you have these things and why you're putting them on because everything that you add needs to have a purpose that you use it for rather than trying to plug for every little individual what if that there is you in all honesty the the, the best thing that you can hope for that deals with as many problems as possible is going by statistical uh, consistence and planning to have to change things up with what you have for anomalies to the uh, to the statistics rather than trying to kit your rifle up for every single what if that there is because real fast you end up with a rifle that's really unwieldy that snags everything and weighs 14 pounds and is supposed to be around seven ish okay with all the doodads on it seven ish six ish pounds with all that right so let me know what you guys think um what are your opinions on your sling choice and stuff like that uh oh and list of slings that are good um the savvy sniper sling i know people are going to bring this up it's a fantastic sling i love it it's really expensive though and i have slings that do the job so i don't personally own one I may just pick one up and do a review on it because from everything I've seen, it's a super solid sling and I totally understand why a million people buy it, okay? I am a huge fan of the MS3 line of slings. I personally go for the mash hooks rather than um, the QD stuff, but I understand why a lot of people go for the QD stuff, especially since there's a lot of stuff that um, accommodates it now. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Blue Force slings. I'm not a big fan of the VTAC sling because they're just there It seems like there is just shit everywhere on that sling and there's so much tightening up that you have to do That's a huge pain in the ass <sighs> So And there's a bunch of others, but those are just a few that come to my mind real fast. So um, Tactical gear lines makes a great sling. Uh, they've been steadily improving their products since they started and those of you who don't know who they are check them out um, I have tested a few of their products before, and I have gone through um, a little bit of quiet R&D with them, and, and dude is very, very on um, personal improvement, so I like, I like tactical gear lines for what it is that they do. Um, I'm not a giant fan of bungee slings. I used to be, but my mind has changed on that because they tend to go against a lot of their design principles, and they tend to dig real hard. But uh, for one reason or another, the slings out that are out by Tactical Gear Lines don't do as much of that dig into your freaking shoulder and collarbone shit that a lot of the bungee slings do. So I would say to check them out. <sighs> Who else? I can't remember. But that, that, it's just a short list of slings that, um, that I personally like. There are probably a bunch of slings that you guys are typing immediately into the comments as you're... Uh, listening to this or watching this so you know is what it is so come train with us and we can show you good ways to handle your individual setups and we'll ask you questions as to what your individual um, need is for that sling and stuff like that and we'll help you configure it in the most efficient way possible especially if you run into snags we can help you out with a lot of that uh, we have classes posted um, right now and you can check us out on our website in the description below. When you get on the page, go to the top right. And for cell phone guys, you'll see a little drop-down menu, like the three bars. You freaking tap that, and it'll bring down events list. And then you can go into events list and see the uh, available classes. Uh, for those of you that are just using a laptop, just go to the top right. You'll see events list, and that, and that little column of stuff there actually follows you the more you scroll. So uh, check us out. If you want to join our discussion page, we, there's also a link for that in the description below. Uh, there's a lot of guys on there now, and there's a lot of cool stuff that goes on on that page. Uh, it's changed a little bit uh, for the better, so there you go. And if you want to support us on Patreon or get a fantastic deal on classes, uh, you can check that out in the description below. Uh, you could see the description for how exactly you can get a tremendous deal on classes and stuff like that. Uh, just go through the Patreon process, and like I said, there's a link in the description below, so you can check all that out. So, now that the sale pitches are done, remember, a regular guy's firearm is the last defense against tyranny. Be easy.